Um, so so um, I'm going to go slideless, but I only had three slides. But you can all probably imagine the slides that I was going to show. So you all probably know the logo for the Open Source Hardware Association. So that was the first slide. Um, but I just wanted to start out and say a huge, huge thank you to our two co-chairs of the Open Hardware Summit, Addy Wagenknecht and Kat Miller. <laughs> they put all this on, and um, it's awesome and wonderful, and we love that it's an annual event of the um, Open Source Hardware Association um, it, within the activities that we do now. Also, I want to call out a couple more people. So Addy and Kat take care of the vast majority of what is done here at the summit, but we also have several co-chairs um, that take care of all the little bits along the way. So you may have been in contact with one of those people if you were a speaker or sponsor. Um, those people are Tony, Catherine, Eileen, Zach, and Max. So thank you so much for your work. You make this conference happen. So 2016 has been a really exciting year for the Open Source Hardware Association and for Open Source Hardware in general. Um, I just want to highlight a couple uh, numbers with you guys. So we now have 11,000 Twitter followers, which is pretty awesome. Our membership has been growing like gangbusters. If you want to become a member today, I highly recommend it because uh, board nominations are open and members get to vote on board nominations. So if you want to vote on who's on the OSHA board, please become a member. You can go sign up downstairs where you got your um, badges today and your bags with Eileen. She is down there and ready to take your membership. We will be hiring our very first employee this year. So we are largely, yeah. So thanks to all that wonderful sponsorship. Thanks to you know the, the ticket sales and everything else. It all helps us. And so we are going to hire a community manager at Oshawa this year. So we won't be a solely volunteer and consultant organization anymore. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and that's largely due because our sponsorships are up 25%, which is pretty awesome. We've had several um, tickets to the summit that, you know, every single year with the summit, you have people that can't make it. And generally, what happens is they ask for a refund, and we refund their tickets. This year, what happened instead is they said, hey, I can't make it, but I would love if you could donate my ticket. And so because of that, we were able to expand the number of Ada fellowships that we gave, and we were also able to expand a bunch of tickets to students. And so that was also really incredible that we did not have a single person ask for a refund. Every single person asked for the ticket to be donated. So that just really says something about this community. So thank you to the people who are here in these seats, and thank you to the people who couldn't make it. Um, so the next thing that I want to talk about is our three initiatives that we're going to be that we have already started. Um, so you've heard hopefully about October as Open Source Hardware Month. The activities that that includes are this summit, so right now today is one of those activities. We also have four documentation days that are set up in various parts of the United States. Um, and you all can run a documentation day in your area if you would like as well. You can go on to the Oshawa website, oshawa.org slash events to see where those events are located. And right here would be the logo for the documentation day slide, but you all can probably imagine that too. Um, and then the third thing, which Michael is going to talk about, and I'm going to hand over to him, is the certification. And so the um, I wanted to kind of mention, though, first, that none of this stuff would be possible without our sponsorships. And here's a sponsorship slide. If you want to see the logos, you can go down there on a banner um, on the Oshawa table downstairs where you picked up your badges and bags. But um, I kind of wanted to call out a few sponsors in particular. So this year, we've had um, some visionary sponsors. And in the entire history of Oshawa, we have so far only had one visionary sponsors over our four years of being alive. And that was SparkFun Electronics. So thank you to SparkFun for being our past visionary sponsor. <laughs> this year, after having one visionary sponsors in four years, we got three visionary sponsors in one year. Um, yeah, so thank you to Intel, 
Autodesk, and Circuit Maker for being our visionary sponsors this year. And before I pass this along to Michael, I just have to say maybe our most exciting piece of news today. Um, so just today, we found out that we were posted on the White House Office of Science and Technology's blog post about um, manufacturing. And so the certification that Michael's gonna tell you about has been you know, put out there publicly on the White House's fact sheet as something that they are looking forward to in, in open source hardware innovation. So that's super exciting. And it's super exciting that that is the second time this year that the Office of Scientific Technology and the White House has talked about Oshawa as an organization. So they've also uh, did it back in April around maker to manufacturing. So this is super exciting. and. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Michael now, and he's going to tell you all about the certification that we're rolling out. And I get to have slides for real, so you don't have to use your imagination, which is good, because I'm the lawyer, and so you never want imagination and lawyers working together. <laughs> oh, it's true, though, you know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that White House thing is amazing. Like, thanks, Obama. We have a great endorsement from the White House, and everything is all good. So this is great. So yeah, one of the things that we've been working on for a long time is this open source hardware certification. And today we're going to be able to roll it out. It's very exciting. And I want to kind of give everyone a little bit of context, a little bit of background. And then we are going to have some time for some Q&A if we have a couple questions, and then obviously for the rest of the day, you can come find us to talk about it. But so we all know that for a long time as a community, we've had two things. We've had this term open source hardware, and we've had this fantastic logo, the open gear logo. And both the term and the gear logo have done really amazing work to raise awareness and community engagement around open source hardware. And they've just been, they've been a great addition to the open source hardware community. And one of the things that's made, the, especially the Gear logo, so powerful is that no one owns it. No one controls it. So it can be used anywhere by anyone. They say, this is open source hardware. I'm going to use the open Gear logo. And it just automatically becomes part of the community. And that's been a real plus. But it has come with at least one challenge, which is that what it has meant is that the definition of open source hardware has been very flexible. And so we have, we have instances where someone will say, oh, this is, this is open source hardware. And their definition of open source hardware isn't necessarily your definition of open source hardware, isn't necessarily the community definition of open source hardware that's maintained by Oshawa. And so it's driven a little bit of confusion. And so while none of what we're going to do today or talk about today uh, changes the, the open source Open Gear logo, and this is actually designed to work in tandem with that Open Gear logo. So you know, for those of you who have Open Gear logo tattoos, this is good news. Uh, <laughs> the Open Gear logo is not going away. <laughs> yes, that's fine. But we're adding kind of a second logo to the mix. And so the idea is to create an open source hardware certification logo. So what this logo means is not only that the piece of hardware that you're, you're looking at, that you're working with, is open source hardware, but that the person producing it has made a legally binding promise to Oshawa that their definition of open source hardware is the community definition of open source hardware. So now you know, if you see a certified logo on a piece of hardware, and they say that it's open source hardware, now you know for sure what that means. So just for some background to remember how we got here, about 18 months ago, we as Oshawa put out a call to the community and we said, hey, we've been hearing concerns. We think a certification may be a way to solve them. But a certification could do a lot of things and could go a bunch of ways. And so here's a whole slew of questions. I think it was 10 or 12 different questions about how a certification could work. Should there be one certification? Should there be tiers of certification? How should people get it? What should go on? We put out this huge list of questions to the community, and we said, we really hope people are interested enough to give us feedback. And they were. We got great feedback. We got amazing feedback from people. We worked through that feedback for about six months, 
And then this time last year at the last Open Hardware Summit, we announced the first version of the open source hardware certification spec. So this was, we took all the, all the feedback, we took all the comments, we had all the discussions, and we said, okay, this is how we think this certification is gonna work. And then for the last year, we've been working with the intellectual property clinic at Stanford University Law School to turn this specification into a real functioning system. And that's what we're announcing today. So what you're gonna be able to do starting today is you can go to the Oshawa website and you'll be able to, for free, register to use the open source hardware certification logo. You'll be able to say, I promise, and you make a legally binding promise to Oshawa, that I am gonna comply with the community definition of open source hardware. And if you make that promise and you go through the process, and the process is, is as simple as filling out a form, then you get two things. The first is you get the right to be able to use the logo. And then you also get that unique identifier at the bottom of the logo. Now the unique identifier has two different elements. The first two characters are a country code. And that's because open source hardware is international. And we really wanted to have an opportunity to draw attention to open source hardware and its international components and actually celebrate it. So you say, oh, this isn't just open source hardware. This is open source hardware from all over the world. Uh, from Lebanon, from India, from the United States. It's going to be a really interesting way to kind of track where people are coming from with open source hardware. And then the second element, that's a sequential ID number. So that's a number that just we will assign to you as the, as the, uh, the requests come in and as people sign up to use a certification. So combined, those two will become your unique ID. Now we've designed this system to be as lightweight, as user friendly, as easy as possible. It really is as simple as going to the website, filling out the form, and then using the logo. But in order for it to work, it does have to be a legally enforceable promise. The thing that makes the certification different is if someone is using the logo and they aren't complying with the community definition, then Oshawa has the ability to go to them and say, hey, you need to stop using that logo because you don't comply with the definition. And that requires a legal promise and sometimes legal promises can, you know, can cause concerns. I, I get that. That's okay. And so what we've done is set up a two-tiered system. First of all, if you have any questions about this system, we really encourage you to email us at certification at oshawa.org. But we also recognize that sometimes you're going to have questions that we as an organization can't answer for you because they're the kinds of questions that your lawyer would have to answer for you. So what we've done is we have partnered with the Cardozo Law School Tech Startup Clinic. And they have agreed to receive referrals from us for free or low cost legal advice. So if you have questions and we can't answer them, we are going to be able to refer you to the clinic and the clinic and the clinicians and the lawyers and the law students there should be able to help you. We're also hoping to add a couple other law school clinics to this list in the next couple weeks and months. And you know, if you are a lawyer and you're here or you're watching this on the internet and you would like to be part of that program, uh, please come find me, let me know, because we'd love to have that network of people. Again, I don't think it's something that is, is necessary for everyone, but we wanna make sure it's a backstop there for the community. The other thing that we have today is because we're rolling this out and we wanted to say to the community, this is something that is going to work and it's gonna be useful, we've had some people who've helped us uh, beta test it and practice and look at this in advance. And so we have a whole series of launch partners who have promised, to, that they've told us as launch partners what they will do is by the end of the year, they've agreed to certify at least one piece of hardware. And if you're looking at this list and you say, oh, I really wish that I was on this slide and I was a launch partner, uh, come find me. We can add you to this, part, to this slide. <laughs> That's easy. And we'd love to bring as many people as possible on to say, we want to, we're involved, we want to get certified, and we want to get certified right at the beginning by the end of the year. But the last thing I wanted to mention is, you know, ever since we started talking about the sequentially assigned unique identifier, we've gotten a lot of versions of the same question, which is, how do I get a low number? <laughs> which is a good question. And so, because we'd had people testing through, we wanted to make this was a, re a really kind of inclusive community process. 
we're not going to start issuing unique identifiers until the end of this month. So while I really want you to get involved and certify something by the end of the year, I really want you to certify something by the end of the month. And we're going to take all the pieces of hardware that go through the certification process by the end of the month, and we're going to put them in a common pool. And then we're going to start assigning numbers randomly to the, uh, to the pieces of hardware in that pool. So every piece of hardware that is registered between now and the end of the year, or sorry, end of the end of the month, is eligible for those super, super low numbers. The good news is you can probably get a low number, even if you're not number one, you can probably get a low number if you get involved and you get in on that first tranche. So mark the end of this month as a, as a day on your calendar. And if you have something that you've been working on that's pretty much done, but you just you don't quite have the documentation done, as Alicia said, we're doing these documentation days all across the world. And so go to documentation day. There's not one near you. Then set one up and hold it. And get that documentation done so you can register and get involved for one of the low numbers. So that's sort of the background. That's what we're going with this. That's what we're going to do. I really encourage everyone to check out the certification site, uh, test it, push it, pull it, see what works, see what doesn't work. And if you have thoughts, ideas, questions, Please either tell us, you can tell me or any of the other board members here today. You can send us an email, so certification at oshawa.org. And this is the first version. Uh, we're proud of it. We think that it works, but we know that it won't work in the entire, for everyone, for every situation. And so we really want your feedback because we want this to be useful and to grow with the community. And so with that, I will say, make sure you check out, uh, check out the website, tell your friends, tell, tell people who aren't your friends that they should go and give it a try. And I think we've got a minute or two if people have questions right now. If not, we can get on to the rest of the great speakers for the afternoon. And if you have questions you want to just not address uh, in front of a big crowd, obviously come find us for the rest of the day. So thank you very much. And if we have questions, I can see, I can see hands. If not, we can, uh, oh, wait. Is the registration numbers, are they decimal or text? <laughs> I am a lawyer. <laughs> What's your preference? No, they are, they are, they're just numbers. They're just numbers. And I will say, oh, there's one other thing I forgot, actually. But thank you. That just triggered it in my mind. Regardless of whether they're decimal or hex, the other function of this, of this system is you can use that unique identifier. If you're a user, if you have a piece of hardware, to go to the website and look up that piece of hardware and find links to all the documentation, all the information, all the licenses that you would expect to come with open source hardware. So there'll be a single place. It's not going to hold everything. This isn't going to be the place where all this information lives, but it'll have pointers to all the information that you would expect. Uh, more questions. Make them hard. That was a good hard question. Great question. So the question is, is it per product or is it per organization? The registration is per product. And the reason for that is because we want to make sure that the, first of all, there's some organizations that are going to have open and not open stuff. And we also want to make sure that as you, those unique IDs can resolve to the documentation for that thing that you're holding in your hand. And so it's as granular as possible. We will, we will expand. That's, that, is a, that is an example of the, of the list. We will, uh, we, we will accommodate in the namespace enough, uh, enough numbers. I would love to have a problem where I underestimated the number of, the number of numbers we should have in there. Uh, other questions? I'll take a question in the back. Right, revision. Great. Other great question. Um, so if, there's a, if you're going to do a revision, we're actually also asking you if it's a significant revision to come back and get a unique identifier. And the reason for that is, if we don't do new, new numbers for new revisions, then the information and the links for the old revisions will disappear. And so we're going we're gonna to make it so it has sort of rich documentation. We'll bunch them in the directory. So you as a user will be able to find kind of all of it. But we will require you to come back and recertify just to make it easier for your users to find the information for that version that they have.
Yes, that's a great question. The question was, what happens if somebody, basically if someone abuses the mark? Either if they enter into the agreement and, uh, and, and then do not actually comply with the definition, or if they use the, the mark without even entering into the agreement. Um, which are, the short answer is, in order for this to work, we have an obligation to patrol it. We have an obligation to make sure that if people are using it, they're really complying. So we've built a system, this is all on the site, that allows us, and it's very graduated, so the first thing that happens is you will get an email from us saying, hey, it looks like you're not using this. And there are a number of steps that allow you, if you want to keep using the mark, to correct before any significant punishment occurs. However, at some point, part of the agreement does allow us to levy fines. And the reason for that is we wanted to build a system that allowed good actors to get everything straightened out without anything significant happening but we needed a way to go after bad actors so that we could maintain the legitimacy of the mark. I probably have time for one more question. Um, way in the back. Also a great question. So the question was, who will have the agency to make amendments to the certification standard? Um, so Oshawa is the house for the certification. So we own the logo, we are, it's, it's our responsibility for it. And so we will, if, we need, if there needs to be a revision, we will be in charge of making the revision. However, our commitment is, just as we use a kind of community process to generate it, I talk with my hands, um, to, to generate this in the first place, if we go through a revision process, and as I said, this is the first version, it is likely that it will be revised at some point, we will design as inclusive a process as possible because, look, this mark only matters if the community cares about it, if you care about it, if you use it, if you look for it. And so the only way that happens is if it, hap is if it exists today in a way that makes sense to you and it evolves in a way that makes sense to you. So ultimately it's Oshawa's responsibility and part of that responsibility is to make sure that any changes occur with community input and as part of an open community process. Uh, how, I, am, I, am I okay on time? Are we okay on time? Okay, I can take another question. You, you just need to hook me off this stage if you want me to get out of here. All right, five minutes. Perfect. Right in the front. So if you create a project based on other projects, is there a lineage of ideas? Yes. So it's, it, that is, sorry, the question was if you, if you base a project on another project, is there a lineage and a linkage? Part of the, pro, part of the application process there's a question that asks you if this is tied to another system. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that this is a super sophisticated back end that's running all of these things. Uh, currently, the super sophisticated back end is uh, a series of Google Forms and Docs and the Oshawa board. <laughs> uh, mostly, yeah, Oshawa board fielding things. But the, the, the system is designed so we record all that information and we build all that linkages. And then also, of course, we're designing it to be an open system. So we're building this, we're making this information available, and then as people sign up, um, even if we can't build beautiful visualizations to help show how it works, um, we're hoping that other people, I would encourage them, to take that information and make it useful for the community, build it into something else. I mean, if it turns out that there is a, a repository of information on the Oshawa site, but somebody builds a better interface for it, you know, more power to you. Uh, yeah, so the question was, are there going to be requirements on how you print the logo? Uh, Jeffrey Warren, who is also an Oshawa board member, has done an amazing job and built a style guide. So there's a style guide on this site. It's actually hosted on GitHub. So if you have, uh, mostly, if you have images in different file formats you'd like to contribute, that you can just do it as a pull request. But there is a style guide that will help you figure out how the logo works on what you're working with. Because obviously, open source hardware is an incredibly broad community. And so how you actually use this logo is going to vary significantly based on what your application is. And so we're trying to make the style guide to be as inclusive as possible while still standardizing things. All right, last question. Is 
It's a good question. This is great. Uh, so the question was, is the certification assigned to the designer or the company? And if so, what happens if the company splits? Um, right now, the certification is assigned to the person who, the person or organization who completes the process and sort of asserts themselves and puts themselves forward as the responsible party. Um, that's how it's designed right now. That's a very kind of, that's a little bit of a flexible standard. And I think that that question like that, and there are a number of similar questions, the only honest answer is we are going to begin to kind of take that as it comes because while we've done a lot of work to try and anticipate a lot of questions, we know we haven't anticipated all of them. And so part of this stage of the process is to get a sense of how people use the certification in practice and where the system that we've set up so far doesn't work. I'm, I'm hopeful and I'm reasonably confident that it's going to work for a lot of cases, but I'm also very confident that there are going to be lots of edge cases that we didn't quite anticipate. And so we really want this to be, you know, it's like a balance. It doesn't, you don't want it to be a living document in the sense that it changes every month. But we do need to make sure that there's a way to accommodate kind of as reality comes in contact with this system. And so since I will, I will end on that note, which is that please try this, use it out, and as you think about what it means for you, and it raises questions that we haven't answered yet, let us know. You know, this is what I look like. Uh, come find us. Come find me here. Uh, any other board members can help. Send an email, and we're going to try and make this an ongoing dialogue. So thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you again for coming to the summit. This is an amazing event every year, so and it, it happens because all of you come. And uh, please use it and let us know how it works. And I hope that it works well for you. Thank you.